Guys, today we're going to be talking about the five best reasons on why you should be playing Weathering Waves. Why is it better than Genshin Impact? And why should I talk about it when we have my boy Lol Shinya talking about the five best reasons why we need to play Weathering Waves? We're going to be reacting to this today because I want to play Weathering Waves, and I'm sure if you're watching this video, you might want to be playing too. So let's let's see here. Today I'll be discussing the top he five a, reasons. He has a, he has a deep ass voice. Reading Strovers. Reasons <laughs> why you should be playing Weathering Waves on May 22nd. May 22nd, guys, that's the release date. Just a reminder date. before we get into it, okay. I'm currently running a $100 subscriber giveaway. All you gotta do is subscribe. Really? This ends on May 22nd with the release of Wuthering Waves. All I have to do is subscribe? I know I not say this enough, but I sincerely appreciate all of your guys' support. This channel has absolutely blown up in the past. It has. Week, and I have it all. Bro has. The bro has. Wait, that's at 11k, right? This is 11. Bro has gotten 2,000, over 2,000 subscribers in less than 24 hours. This is probably more than 24 hours. I don't know how long it's going to be, or when he edited the video, but Jesus, oh, 2k subs since then. Guys, hit that subscribe button. $100 for really your chance to win. All of you. We love it. If there's any specific videos you guys would like to see, drop a comment down below and know what you, what coats. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'll figure out a video after watching this. Reasoning number one. Okay. The co-op. Hey, co-op. Monsters that you kill in your world. Okay, so the one thing that I really want to know about co-op here, right, is is co is it co-op like as in Genshin? I, well, I already know a little bit about co-op. I know that you can go into people's world and kill stuff and stuff like that. But I wonder, like, the connectivity of it, right? Like, I know with Genshin there's a lot of limitations on it. I just wonder if it's better than Genshin's co-op. That's Although my main thing. Do not thing. respawn until the daily reset. Okay. Although you can join friends in a world or a random world to pair up with people and farm them. Uh-huh. This gives you the opportunity to infinitely farm, and the co-op experience really nice. is absurdly clean. That's really nice. I'd love to hear that. are able to explore the world with up to two other players for a total okay. of three. Total three players? Although currently at the time of recording this video, it is unknown whether we will be able to do the end game challenges and face hmm. them together. Like the tow Tower of Adversity or Holograms together. Yeah, that would be cool to see if you could like do like the end game moments together. I don't know. I feel like... I don't know. I, me personally, I feel like that's not something. I don't know. Maybe I don't think they would do that. I feel like like the Tower of Adversity and like the in-game holograms. I feel like they should. You should just have to fight it by yourself. I mean, me personally, I feel like it'd be better to fight it by yourself. I feel like you could just super easily cheese it. But then I guess you have like the casual players that might have trouble beating it. Then you can have them come in. I don't know. Like, I know with Genshin, you can enter domains together and stuff like that, but, I mean, if you're able to infinitely farm, that's super nice, especially for, like, the, the people with, like, the really grindy mindsets, right? And I feel like, I mean, what are you doing in Genshin anyways while you're playing Genshin? You're you're p picking berries in all day. At least in this game, you can go infinitely farm stuff. You'll have more stuff to do with your day. You're mint picking, except you're killing enemies infinitely. That's super cool, right? And you get echoes from it, so... This will make farming echoes and specifically bosses a much more enjoyable and fun experience. Okay, I think it'll be. I can agree with that. I think that it will be enjoyable. For me, though, I would much rather beat the enemies by myself originally. I don't know. Maybe it's something you beat originally. I don't know. Curl Maybe I'm going to the co op aspect of the game as much as possible. Mm -hmm. All right, so you may be asking yourself. What am I going to do if I don't have any friends? Yeah. I don't want to rely on... What am I going to... I don't have any friends, Shinya. How am I going to play this game? Join their games and Tiny Hunt or even Echo Hunt in general. Uh-huh. Well, good news for you is that my Discord is open. I plan oh. on doing a ton of Echo Hunting events over on my Discord. Holy I guys, hey. Shinya Shack open. If you guys need some uh, some some stuff to, to do and... In Weathering Waves, make sure you join Shinya Shack. Also, join my Discord as well. Link in the description down below. I'm sure we'll have plenty of Weathering Wave players that would love to help you out in your adventure of collecting echoes and endlessly farming and endlessly grinding. Join the YouTube chat cult today. Anyways, guys. Built a community of Weathering, Sorry, wave, plug. weathering Waves lovers who would be more than happy to help you out with shiny hunting or Hell yeah. echo of farming in general. I plan on doing a ton of events over at my Discord, <laughs> so... Peep the description down below and click the link to join my Discord. Okay, join the join Discord the gamers. The right, I'll show you how to do it too. I'll show you. I'll show you how to do it, guys. Down in the description, we go right here. Uh, we click Discord right here. It brings you to this page. Kabam! Discord launch app. Join Shinya's Shack right there, baby. We join Shinya Shack. We are gaming right now. That's how you get it, gamers. <laughs> Weathering waves being more akin to a Souls-like over a standard yep. button mash gotcha. Gives you much more skill expression, team building, and that is overall nice. just theory crafting. Dodges, perfect parries, combos, intro and I hope I hope it feels nice. I hope it feels nice. I hope the parry ends up feeling really There's nice. There's just so much room for different strategies, and I'm excited oh, the to see what the community too. cooks up. She's With hot. the emphasis on your team working together by providing in and off-field buffs, 
I'm sure there will mm -hmm. be crazy, never for never before seen or thought of compositions, challenges, and unique takes on combats that no one has thought of. Before. Bro's moving in his chair. Not being locked in. I hear the chair moving. Are for specific Bro, it sounds like my chair. Can I? My chair makes a bunch of fucking noises when I move around, even the slightest moves in it. It's fucking annoying. It's really Absolute annoying. Godsend. I'm That's like, why I stand up and do green screen videos now. Other games in the in the gotcha space. There's nothing worse than entering a fight and realizing you haven't built the correct element to take on the challenge, and overall have to suffer because of this. I truly believe this is going to be the one saving grace for all the casuals in this game. Really? All elements do equal so? damage to all element all enemies. There is no specific enemy that requires a specific element, unlike other games in the genre. Hmm. I do foresee element-based challenges in the future. I would hope that. That's what I was going to say. I would hope there would be element-based challenges in the future because I do believe that brings for a more, more complex team-building aspect to the game because you have to choose specific units to fight with, so you can't just power your way through the game with the same team you've been using the whole time. I believe it adds diversity to the game and more replayability to the game if you add more diverse bosses to fight. Though or typings, anyways. You should the say, game gets say. a little bit more mature. I think it'll add another depth of complexity. Exactly. If they yeah. Focus on something like this for end game. Yeah. But not necessarily, you know, beginner, mid to late. -ish. I even think. I think even mid game, it could provide a lot of comp. I think adding more complexity to the mid game would keep keep people hooked because I think by the end of the early game, you're probably gonna get bored of using the same characters the whole time and having like enemies with different typings will force you kind of to use different characters. I mean, it depends on how much they give you for free, right? Like I said, in game for me is I'm thinking like you just hit like the max level, like the max soul level you can reach, and your grinding is just beginning, right? I don't believe in game is until you. I don't believe like really in. What am I trying to say here? I don't fucking know. Don't don't worry about me, guys. I'm coping. I'm hungry. That way the casuals can thrive, because the game is gonna live or die by the casual base. At the exactly, end of the day. but I don't think that making the game easy all the way up until like end game is going to keep the casuals there because you still need fun aspects of the game on and making them use more things i feel like to keep them and intrigued to the game if you keep them using the same thing the whole time they'll get bored of the game i feel like too all right thirdly we have the gotcha system unlike other games weathering waves is set to be extremely generous with its oh thank god launch. with offering over 240 pulls on who the launch through all of 240 the rewards and events that are going on you're going to be able to receive that's as much stamina as you get in the game massive roster of resonators and weapons to take on Rude, anything the dude. game has to throw at you now again kuro hasn't 100 percent confirmed the five star selector on 80 pulls mm -hmm. but i have a seeking suspicion that this will be offered on launch due to how widespread nice. this, this decision has been That'd be pretty nice if you could do that. And remember, the only thing that is completely and 100% guaranteed is the Beginner's Convene banner, which will yeah, give you, can you choose... a random 5-star after doing 50 pulls on it. I believe you can... If we don't get the 5-star selector, again, which I have a high sneaking suspicion we will... I be, I be, yeah, you probably will, right? Accounts may be back on the table, boys. Especially if you want a specific 5-star. Yeah. But, I mean, not only that... I feel so like there I thought, isn't there a system in the game where you're you're allowed to choose a five star? I believe there is, right? I haven't done much much research to the game. I really just started to do my research on the game, but I believe there's a system now where you can choose a five star, right? Weapon banners, you are guaranteed the pull yeah, weapon. the weapon once you hit pity. None of this fifty. And you also or you also get you can choose nonsense. what weapon you want to on the standard banner, I'm right? I believe certain other companies catch on to this. True, this that'd be really nice. Just... Yo, my Honkai Star Rail look, man, that seventy five twenty five is beating my ass. Vision is absolutely incredible and is buying Kuro a ton of good faith in the gotcha space community. Bro, you do need a lot of good faith to Theory compete. Graphic. Honestly, you're going to need a lot of good faith to compete. The only thing is, though, the only thing is, though, you if you give them an inch, they want to take a mile. It doesn't matter how much good faith you give them. If you roll back any of this good faith, they will turn on you like that. They do not care. They will turn on you as quick as a dime, okay? So you have to keep the same rewards up. That's my problem with Cookie Run Kingdom. That's why a lot of people quit Cookie Run Kingdom. The devs were so nice. They gave you so much. And then you could see through the updates. They kept giving you less and less and less. And people are like, why? What? The devs are ass. So you have to keep. It's like a, a, a fine balance you have to keep. You can't give them too much. Because they'll get bored of the game, obviously. But you can't give them less than Genshin. You can't give them the same as Genshin. You have to give them more than that because then it makes them seem like a better company, but then you can't revert back and get greedy. You have to stay 
the the baseline you start out with, you have to stay at least there the whole time. If if not, slowly rise up the amount you give to the players. Drafting long term here, I have a, a feeling that Kuro is going to lean into this as much as absolutely possible. They have to. Obviously, at the end of the day, they're a company, and they really want to make sure they're maximizing profits. Yeah. But guaranteeing banners just means more people are going to spend more money I agree. On it. I would spend yeah. money if I could guarantee something. Like, that's something that rubs me the wrong way. I love using rub me the wrong way, by the way. That's something that rubs me the wrong way with playing, like, like uh, Honkai Star Rail X Genshin Impact when I did. It's like, it's like do I really want to spend $180 to attempt to get this light cone? No, I don't. If I can get, the, get, get it guaranteed, sure though, I would 100% do it. They're going to get what they want after they spend X amount of dollars. Yeah, exactly. That being said, though, it does technically disincentivize the whales a little bit more. But you know those whales. They're going to get all the weapons and resonators to their max resonance. Okay, the thing is, right, I think I think that by, by disincentivizing the whales, oh, sure, you make less money out of the whales, but I think you're going to make a lot more money out of the casual player base by adding a guarantee or a 100% system. Because people don't like taking risks, and this eliminates all the risks. At the end of the day, so does it really matter that much? I think you'll the get more money at the casuals. Echoes just equals Pokemon. Yeah. For the unfamiliar, Pokemon, the echo system basically. in the game is akin to Pokemon catching. You go out into the world, you beat up monsters and bosses, and you have a chance to absorb their essence. Hell the yeah. The chance is dependent on the I can't wait for this monster shit. and how many monsters this you have This is heat before. right here. This is fire gamers. This encourages you to fill up your Pokedex. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and by the way, guys, this is super important. Your your terminal level is super important. I'm releasing a video on everything that uh, you don't want to make a mistake on in the future. So subscribe if you haven't already to see content on that. But yeah, terminal level is super important. That's something you should definitely be aiming, on, aiming for. With as many unique monsters as possible. The best part is, you can equip these monsters like artifacts and relics from other familiar titles. And they all have varying set bonuses, stats, and substats that will be randomly... Let's not get it twisted, guys! Focus on the sets! Focus on the stats over the sets! ...hold whenever you obtain them. Keep in mind these monsters have specific mm -hmm. costs associated with them. Yep. So you, you will need the theory craft. The yeah, you also you also need to get your the, uh, the level up, like I mentioned before, to actually increase the amount of cost you can the use. The best so. possible combination. You will also be able to use Echo Monster's abilities to enhance your combat. Monkey. Right, so I know a lot of people aren't familiar with this next concept, but it is absolutely crazy. Echoes have a variety of rarities. Yeah. And not only do they have rarities, they have shiny. Yeah, shinies. Rarities. Yeah, dude, shinies. I, I love that. I know your ears just perked up. Yeah, they did. Running out and catching. Oh my god! Game. Imagine the feeling you get when you run into the world and you just see a a variant. Like, what is that? It's like when Genshin. One thing that I loved Genshin for was the they added in that that hilly churl that had all the gold on him and shit. I was like, I found him. I I would always get so hype of finding that motherfucker. This right here is amazing. I love this. Echo out in the world. Not to mention, if you kill a shiny in a multiplayer, everyone gets it. Oh, that is so this nice. Is... You can shiny hunt in multiplayer. That is so nice. Heard just friends and community. Now, I do hope that the drop rate is super low on these. It needs to play together, as everyone gets the It'll make you feel more gratifying. Realistically, what can happen is your friend can find a shiny in their world, invite you to their yep. game, and you will both get it. That's super nice. You do nice. not need to be on their world during the reset. Only need to be there when the... Here's shiny a fun fact. Egg. Give me this fun fact. Scarlet's gonna give us a fun fact, uh, YouTube. If you catch a shiny one, you can change your normal ones into shinies. So, wait, I'm assuming, like, if you any echo you get from that point on, it's like a skin. It's like a uh, coat you can put on. So even if the echo you get is ass, you can make any of the echo shiny if you're using that specific echo. Hell yeah, that's amazing. I like that a lot. So then if you, if you get, like, a shitty drop for, like, a shiny, I do kind of hope that the shiny does drop you, like, a, like, a special variant of the relic as well. But yeah, that's nice, a shiny skin. This adds yet another end game element to the game for it all those shiny hunters out there. And I also know all the mint pickers out there too. Pokemon shiny hunters love it. I've seen some of your videos and streams. Although currently shinies don't offer any additional bonuses, I have a sneaking suspicion that Kuro Games is going to reevaluate the shiny system and offer some uh -huh. sort of incentive to go shiny hunting. I feel like they should drop like a higher percent chance or something like that. And lastly, we have true endgame difficulty. Okay, Unlike true endgame gotcha difficulty. Games, which have an extremely boring or limited endgame activity or system, uh -huh. Wuthering Waves on launch has the hologram boss system, 
Okay. Which lets you face off against extremely harder versions of the bosses. Does it keep On infinitely Vega, stacking? The difficulties went all the way up to six, with each floor being significantly harder than the last. I wouldn't call it Not infinitely, only does this though. offer something for players to strive for, it ties back to it my earlier nice, discussion on skill expression. These higher difficulty bosses are not going to be any joke whatsoever, as these are timed events, meaning you will timed have events? to perfect Oh, you defeat it in a certain amount of time. Sure oh, that's pretty fun, yeah. The highest it could possibly be with your Echo. I feel like it should be low, like infinite level scaling though as well. Like if you build up your account enough, then you can just keep going further and further and further. Kind of like the AFK aspect of like AFK Arena and stuff like that, where you get to a point like, I can't beat this right now. You have to get your, 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 your team stronger or something like that to actually beat the next level of this. I wish it was kind of like that, honestly. Just your weapons and just your skills. It had a lot more in-game content. Team combos are gonna be incredibly important for this mode as you're going to need to pump out as much DPS as you possibly yep. can to make sure you're meeting these, these very strict timers on the bosses. You'll also need to take advantage of dodges and perfect parries to reduce mm -hmm. the amount of time you spend taking hits and to reduce the boss's stagger meter, yep. which once that bar is reduced, they go into a stun state you where do they more take damage. additional damage yeah. and you can just exactly, sit okay. there and wail on them. This is the true definition of a Souls-like. Using everything you've built up during your game into the final col final culmination of one hard as hell fight. Uh huh. Right, so that about wraps it up. That wraps it up. Those are the top five reasons why I think you need to play Weather. Hell Wars. yeah! I can't wait Did for I it. Did I miss anything? I don't what think do so. I mean, I've done my Weather very Wars. limited research into the game, but uh, hey. That sounds amazing. Go subscribe to Shinya, guys. Link to his stuff will be in the description down below. He's doing a giveaway, too, so if you subscribe, you might win $100. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. See you guys later. Are you guys ready for Weathering Waves? I am. I can't wait to play it. I can't wait for the content I'm making on either. Less than a week. Well, 10 days. Anyways, bye, guys. See you later.